the solar micronova is going to happen in the coming years, and it will be the most devastating thing that's happened to this planet in about 12,000 years. But we'll get to that. Nova astronomy. Well, that's been quite the disaster over just the last several years. If you graduated after having studied astronomy a decade ago and you have not kept up, you literally know nothing about Nova events, but you're about to. And what follows is the demonstration that this changing paradigm will eventually result in the recognition that the sun has a solar micronova recurring event, even if it takes the black sun and explosion itself to realize it. Most nova are not supernova, where the star is destroyed, but they are recurring events. They get names like classical nova, dwarf nova, or rapidly recurrent nova, but all are actually recurring. The long-standing theory of how they occur, by accretion from a binary star, is still a valid way to make a nova, but it's no longer the lone mechanism, and this is how we open this door. Astronomers have discovered several nova events from single star systems with no degenerate binary, and that was before the poor little star that wandered into a molecular cloud and exploded, like the subsequent dark nova that were discovered as well. Its trigger mechanism was the interaction with the material around it. All you need is to dump that material onto the star, whether that's from a binary or otherwise. They are having trouble classifying many of these events with some nova having to switch categories. Others, taking odd names, the nova-like events are even more numerous than the official nova events, which means there's still a long road of the unknown to go for them to understand them. There are even more stars that blink. They darken, and then they re-brighten, including Betelgeuse in recent years. These don't have a bright luminosity aspect to them, a no-brightness nova event, just the dust shell ejection. It's a kind of micronova. The nova aspect of a pulsar is so tiny, it wouldn't even reach Mercury if something like that happened in our solar system. And after a century with just a handful of types of nova events, the list has begun to grow. New types of nova that challenge models and theory. Even new types of supernova events are being seen. And those on stars previously never seen before. And as if the no brightness nova wasn't weird enough, how about the no ejection nova, the no nova nova? Didn't learn about that in class, did you? From tiny white dwarfs to massive hypergiant stars, there are no star classes that cannot fall prey to the nova symptoms. And yes, it is official that many of those nova events are from single stars, not from binaries. This essentially nullifies the majority of the last century of nova science that you find in textbooks. Now, while astronomers continue to be surprised by nova events seemingly every month, I'm not even surprised anymore to read headlines like this. Perhaps they should begin to expect the unexpected. Especially since we now see nova events without accretion, without material dumped onto them, and simply from a powerful magnetic kick to the star as was the case here. So, there are two ways to get a nova, a magnetic kick and material being dumped onto the star, whether from a binary or otherwise. How small can a nova actually be? They have now found them tinier than super flares. In fact, as small as solar flares from the sun that we seem to get every 11 years or so. The lines are as muddy as they can be. And now we know from their own mouths that failure is at hand. This is one of the best Nova astronomers ever. He is plainly stating that the models and theory have failed and unknown physics are at work. Now, with that, with Nova astronomy basically in shambles, let's get to the fun part. When they discovered a mini Nova, yet another new one, I knew it was only a matter of time before they found micro Nova. And a few months later, after observers have been called crazy for years for saying these were real, they have finally admitted micronova exist. They still guess it's a binary and accretion scenario, but once more, they have no proof of that. It's just a guess. So let's come to galactic astrophysics for the journey to discovering that the sun can do it too. It has before, and it's about to do it again in the coming years. That story begins with a galactic magnetic field and electric field within the central plane, 
We call it the galactic current sheet. It's been seen in our Milky Way. It's been seen in other galaxies. It's been seen at the sun and other stars, and it's been seen in the lab. Let's take a moment to learn about this current sheet with our previous examination. Let's see some of this evidence, starting in the realm of simulations of the fields, which, when placing flows opposite and parallel, they want to form the ballerina skirt waviness that appears near the midplane in the newest galactic field simulation, properly perpendicular to the fields breaking up and down from the wave crests, lets you know they're solid in their theory. And of course, the newest electric field simulation of those parallel oppositely flowing fields produces those endless ripplings. In the realm of observations, these would include the gamma signatures where the current sheet crosses the higher plasma and dust density midplane, the galactic equator, or how they've known this cloud of dust and plasma is heading right at us for decades and they just say it's a remnant of a past supernova. I love coincidences. Anyway, add on to the previous knowledge of the wave amplitude, we now also know the wavelength, tens of light years, putting us about 200 or so ripples out from the galactic center in terms of the electric field. It's another gem from the recent Voyager studies on the magnetic pressure fronts it's encountering. Also key is how it's driven by the rotation. In the lab, in the solar system, everywhere, if the central node wasn't spinning, the field would be flat. But you put a spin to her and she happily abides by the physics of plasmas under the influence of that central node. This is the why to the ubiquitous observations matching theory, matching math and simulations and more observations, the rotation of the system. The want for clarity is understandable. I checked. The news concerning the revolution in galactic magnetic field theory and the existence of the galactic current sheet has been shared here in 19 different morning news shows over the last 22 months with two more special videos. Now that's a lot to remember and a lot more if you have to go find them. Just a few years ago, even though astronomers knew galaxies were threaded with magnetic fields, they believed them to be an incoherent mishmash of the fields fueled by supernova randomly scattered about. But all that began to change as infrared and radio missions began returning better data on the galactic field the central torus, and the cosmic jet. While the national labs were proving that cosmic jets could be created by the interaction of magnetic fields and electric currents, astronomers were seeing the large-scale structure of the galactic magnetic fields. They have studied from above and found the curved fields, just like in our sun's current sheet. They have mapped our own and others from an edge-on perspective, finding both the toroidal field shape and the central plane. They have found that magnetic reversals occur cyclically in the stream they see in the plane, indicating a sinusoidal pattern of magnetic field orientation. They've dug deeper, using polarized light to reveal what proper motion sometimes cannot. And since the door to this new galactic magnetic field paradigm cracked open, a flood has begun. And no part of that flood has been more important than the discovery and confirmation over and over that the magnetic fields are streaming outward inside of the central current sheet plane, and these string-like features indeed go out throughout the midplane of the galaxy, where over 90% of the stars are actually found. There in the plane, the field structure becomes more complex, with crisscrossing returns in the data indicative of those magnetic field sectors throughout the plane. Now up close, we see the fine local detail of the interstellar fields, but perhaps this is actually too close for the moment. Indeed, they are modeling the galaxy as a scaled-up version of the solar system, electromagnetically. Powerful central engine with an ion wind, poloidal magnetic field structure with a central current sheet containing the magnetic fields. As you get further out, it ripples more and more, and the closer waves also have higher amplitude. This is all due to the bunching up as you move out of a much broader undulation close into the system that goes for both the solar system and apparently the galaxy, where the wave amplitude follows that pattern where a nearly 3x increase in that amplitude comes as you compare the interior to the exterior portions of the galactic midplane, where the galactic sheet can be found. Recently, they even used gamma returns to catch nodes where the rippling sheet crosses the central plane of material and causes more interactions. As you might easily recognize, if you can count, this is not spiral arm over densities. We've never seen a galaxy with arms concentrically twisted that many times, especially on one half of the galaxy. Galactic nucleus is off the page to the right. Those nodes are indeed the sheet. Now coming down to the level of the sun, 
Astronomers' initial guesses were way off years ago in the mapping of local gas and dust, something where overdensities could be indicative of a nova remnant or the galactic current sheet wave. But scientists have run into problems, and none is bigger than the dust. It turns out that not only do we have a hard time spotting it, but it frustrates our ability to accurately measure the gaseous component of the sheet. Now here's what we know. In terms of the waves emanating radially from the galactic center, there is a large wave behind us, and one that appears to have begun engulfing our system now, which has considerable voids within it, but is a large coherent structure on the macro scale. We recently learned a lot more about the wave behind us, the Radcliffe wave, and while the scientists claim they can't figure out why it so nicely does a sine wave hugging the galactic equator, if you haven't slept through this video so far, I bet you've got some ideas. It's one thing to have verifiable proof that it exists, but it's another to know that we're taking a hit from that galactic current sheet right now. So let's go back to another examination. Let's hit the magnetic turbulence seen by Voyager. Now, back when these pressure fronts and shocks were first discovered, they wanted to blame pure interstellar turbulence. If you'll recall, I said that was not going to account for what they see. Here, the team is now saying exactly that, that what's expected from normal interstellar plasma is not going to be able to explain the magnetic turbulence seen by the Voyagers. This is where our previous explanation now comes into play. Now that the original hypothesis from the astronomers is debunked, we have to look at the impact of the galactic current sheet on our solar system, how it's affecting us here in our galactic neighborhood. Second, this one was rather simple, but details a critical way we know the current sheet is there. The magnetic flux tubes and Parker instability are precisely what we see in such electric fields that are shaped into a current sheet. We see it in the lab, we see it in the solar wind and in the sun's current sheet, and we see it at the galactic level as well. Anytime there is a central magnetic object and disk electric field at its equator, it's going to ripple and wave into a current sheet due to the Parker instability, and through it flow the flux tubes. The interstellar pickup ions and the gradually increasing plasma pressure associated with the shock waves encountered by New Horizons, which is out past Pluto, heading in the general direction of the galactic center. It was an expected announcement, not only because of the overall paradigm with the galactic current sheet, but because just last week we saw a similar story about energetic neutral atoms, ENAs, and how they were exceeding model predictions, which isn't really fair to the model because it models the interactions without the current sheet. Both interstellar pickup ions and ENAs result from interactions between solar wind, solar photoionization, and the material just outside the solar system, which we are encountering. It's not just the magnetic pressure fronts and shocks of the current sheet to our solar system, and it's not just the energetic neutral atoms and interstellar pickup ions, the ENAs and IPUs, but the dust stuck to the galactic current sheet has begun penetrating into the inner solar system, with several papers recently showing that excess dust in the interplanetary space and all the way into the sun. We have seen rapid changes to the Ibex ribbon, the magnetic signature of the galaxy on our sun's magnetic field surrounding the solar system. Such magnificent changes can only be explained by a strongly changing galactic magnetic force. They have begun to do detailed analysis of the galactic current sheet vertical waves nearby to our solar system, discovering several important facts about them, including the fact that they are tens of light years wide, meaning that just one passage of a ripple will last several years, allowing us to see it coming as we are now. The wave perturbations are about a 10% deviation in density, which is actually quite a bit for space. And they have a scale height of about 60 to 170 parsecs, which is about 200 to 550 light years tall. The combination of their identification of the current sheet, their ability to characterize its physical form, and the signs that it is hitting right now means now it's time to go to the concept that this is indeed the trigger for the solar micronova. Happening cyclically every time we take the hit and beginning with why we know there must be such an event from the sun, we're going to run through several articles here on evidence of past nova events causing destruction at Earth. But with them comes a bit of a problem for the physics. There are so many of these, so it must be several nova events, but there are no nearby stars that are good candidates which 
makes them think it was a supernova. But for a supernova to be that close by, it would have destroyed our atmosphere and killed the planet, which we know didn't happen. If it was further away, a distant star, the nova isotopes wouldn't have made it here. They would have decayed. And the same is true if they had been sticking around from a nova before our solar system formed. Further debunking the distant star idea is the fact that for the first time ever, they modeled magnetic fields with the nova explosions, and uh-oh, they found the dust carrying those isotopes doesn't leave the remnant. Magnetic dusty pinballs banging around inside. So again, it's not some distant star. We are inside the remnant of these events, which cannot be supernova because we are still here. But there are no stars nearby to have made the recurring blasts. Enter Doug Vogt and the solar nova hypothesis. If it is indeed the sun and a recurrent nova, we don't need other supernova which would have destroyed the earth and we are inside the remnant, so we wouldn't need any other nearby stars, which again, we don't see as possible. Doug and I may disagree on the minutia of the solar micronova event, but we agree that it's going to happen in general. And his identification of the isotope findings are the key giveaway that we do have a solar nova event. Moving on, a recent study showed that without nova-like events, the galactic current sheet buoyancy couldn't be sustained. But of course, observations tell us it actually is. The only way this is possible, according to this study, is if nova events, like the solar micronova, are recharging the sheet along the way, injecting that energy as the sheet impacts so that it goes right where it needs to go. Add in the stories from the Bible, Egypt, Zoroastrian texts, and other sources of the black sun and the solar flash. It's kind of icing on the cake. Now, remember those two ways to make a nova, a magnetic kick or material accretion, and realize that the galactic current sheet delivers both at the exact same time. It is an electric field containing the galactic magnetic reversal point. There's the magnetic kick. And its ENAs, IPUs, and the dust are the material that accretes. It's actually the only known way in the universe to deliver both known nova triggers at the same time. We already know that material dumped onto the sun causes eruptions as we see with coronal plasma rain triggering isolated flares. So what happens when that material is dumped across the entire sun with this galactic delivery? To quickly review, the isotopes tell us we need a nova and the only possible answer is the sun given the magnetic dusty pinballs. The solar micronova not only explains earthly evidence from the past, but it's the only way to make the galactic sheet stay buoyant and make the science match the galactic observations. It's the only way to deliver both nova triggers at the exact same time, and as we have evidence of that sheet impacting the solar system now, we are beginning to see the changes we'd expect to see on the sun. Not just the extra dust, but extra helium chemistry as its magnetic fields are changing, the coronal magnetic fields, all the science, all the signs, matching the ancient stories as well. Folks, there are no holes left here. This is everything you'd need from a scientific perspective, from the deconstruction of traditional Nova astronomy, to the discovery of what is possible, to the verification of the galactic physics, to the necessity of the solar micronova explaining Earth evidence and galactic observations, to the evidence we're in that galactic current sheet impact now, below the video. You can find more on how else the solar system is changing. There is magnetic evidence from the sun out to Pluto and beyond. Just click the link to the Earth disaster video found in the description box. You could sign up for our e-magazine, which covers this topic, the updates, the ongoing science, and much more. And subscribe here for daily updates on the sun and Earth and the coming cyclical catastrophe. The sun is going to micronova this century, likely before 2050. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.